do, of course, want to stay on this story. For that, I want to bring in Richard Makepeace. He's a former U.K. Consul General in Jerusalem and a trustee of the charity Medical Aid for Palestinians. Richard, thank you for making time for us. Pleasure. First, I want to start with getting your reaction to the statement that was made by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office saying that Israel will allow food, water and medicine from Egypt into Gaza so long as these supplies do not reach Hamas. We were discussing this with our reporter. How critical and how challenging is it that this aid goes to the appropriate people? Well, it's, it's critical and it's also challenging for all kinds of reasons. Um, the state of the roads is, is just an obvious and, and, and very practical one. Uh, I don't want to uh, play down the importance uh, symbolically of the border being opened for aid. That's extremely welcome. But a few trucks is really not going to do a great deal uh, for a million people uh, in South Gaza, uh, many of them without enough food without clean water, let alone uh, medical facilities having what they need. And it's not just a matter, of course, of opening the border. There needs to be an agreement. There need to be routes to be followed. There need to be timetables, partly to ensure that the, uh, that the uh, goods get to the right recipients, but also to make sure um, that the convoy doesn't get bombed, for example, accidentally. So it's a great deal more complicated, and it's going to require a real commitment, uh, including on the part of the government of Israel, to make this work. And I just hope that's going to be forthcoming. I'm sure that's what President Biden was pressing for, and I hope it's what Rishi Sunak is pressing for, too, during his visit. You know, you touched on the fact that we we're talking about about 20 trucks carrying some of that much needed aid and whether or not really that is enough, because you're also the trustee of medical aid for Palestinians. So what are you hearing from staff about the conditions on the ground? What are they telling you? Well, the conditions on the ground are absolutely appalling. I mean, people drinking water that's completely unsafe, uh, and this includes children. Um, the sewage systems and uh, and so on, having water systems having broken down because of the lack of, uh, of fuel and the lack of electricity from the power station. I mean, this is obviously hugely dangerous in terms of um, the risk of uh, serious disease epidemics breaking out uh, and for public health generally. I mean, the one thing that everybody needs is is clean water, especially the very young. In terms of medicines, the hospitals are in a, a desperate situation just in terms of simple things like painkillers and bandages, or so I'm told by our, our colleagues on the spot. And of course, the lack of electricity means that all kinds of medical activity is completely impossible. You know, Richard, you have such a wealth of experience when it comes to what is happening right now in this conflict. Of course, as the UK Consul General in Jerusalem, uh, and also when it comes to medical aid for Palestinians, a trustee for that charity. But also, we know that there are still approximately 200 hostages that are still being held by Hamas. And back in 2007, in fact, you met with Hamas's leader in an effort to try and release BBC journalists who was abducted in Gaza. We, of course, understand that this is an entirely different circumstance, but given your experience in this arena, what do you think the chances are uh, of freeing these now, it's estimated, 203 hostages? Well, I think it's going to be extremely difficult, and it's a dreadful humanitarian issue with which to, uh, to have to deal. My heart goes out to all those who've uh, lost relatives now who are, who are in this situation. But as you say, the situation uh, over the, the British journalist was very, very different. He was not taken by Hamas, um, and it was possible to convince Hamas uh, that it was very much in their own interests um, to find a way to free him. Indeed, Palestinian journalists in Gaza were protesting uh, outside the government offices on a, on a regular basis that not enough was being done. Uh, in the case of the, the current hostage situation, it's obviously a very, very different um, uh, quantity and quality of, uh, of, of difficulty. Uh, I can only say that there have been negotiations in the past, mediated, for example, by countries such as Qatar, such as Egypt. Uh, and I guess that uh, this is really the sort of avenue that the government of Israel in due course uh, may be exploring. 
So let's talk about that for a moment, because these hostages, of course, as you pointed out, include not only Israelis, but also foreign nationals. So you pointed to the roles that other governments can play. Let's talk about Egypt, Qatar, for example. You touched on them. How can they play a role in the potential release of these hostages? Well, I think it would be a matter of, uh, uh, as it were, passing messages, mediating between um, Hamas and uh, the uh, Israeli authorities to see if there were ways that um, uh, agreements could come to. But whether the government of Israel feels it's the right time to do anything of that kind, of course, I, I, I simply do not know. Richard, thank you so much for all of your insights on this topic today. We appreciate your time. Most welcome. Richard Makepeace is a former UK Consul General in Jerusalem and trustee of medical aid for Palestinians.